Hello everyone, I'm, uh, I was about to say Purple Wookie. I haven't said the purple front of my name in years. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Wookie and I'm here with Zedrot. Hello. And we're here to talk some good old Shonen Archive. What Shonen Archive? I'm glad you asked. Shonen Archive is a series in which me and Zen have dedicated our entire beings soulfully to watching every single piece of Shonen Jump anime out and live action yes eventually we're gonna have to talk about the live action one piece as well i think it'd actually be really funny if the first thing we ever did on one piece together was the live action <laughs> i might actually do that now, i have um, no interest in the live action series but i would watch it for the bit. I, I just have enough interest in it to be heartbroken <laughs> so it would be great <laughs> they got a spanish luffy up in there i i'm set up for failure zen <laughs> they they really teach it uh charlie brown at the time to ruin your life exactly there's nothing more than i want to see one of my people succeeding and <laughs> nothing more heartbreaking to see them fail man did you see the um video of all of them watching the teaser all the actors and he mm-hmm. was like in tears it's very cute <sighs> yeah oh man please <laughs> i'm begging you this guy wants it so much he says gum gum with such passion you know so fucking hard that is to find someone <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll talk about that when, <laughs> when we get closer to the release date but the series we do talk about is Gintama as our main one and then on the side Kuroko's Basketball and Jujutsu Kaisen and today we're here to talk about Gintama episodes uh, the a four batch of episodes that I, I like to call the ones before the big arc episodes 135, 136, 137 uh-huh. and 138 <laughs> the episodes that nobody likes right before really good stuff <laughs> The ones where they kind of have to release, you know, we have to have the pause break before the bigger ones. And that's what these are, basically. So yeah, then they don't, they don't have the charm of, like, the Goku and Piccolo go to driving school <laughs> episodes, you know? No, no, no. To be fair, who can truly be that one? That's true. Yeah, it's hard to be, to be the pinnacle of, you know, <laughs> waiting for the big arc is <laughs> those driving episodes. <laughs> But we're going to talk about these, and we're going to start with episode 135. Episode 145, 135, oh my god, I skipped 10 episodes. 135 is... Okay, ahead. Yeah, <laughs> we're going to just go straight forward, barrel for all of it. Um, before worrying about the Earth, think about the even more endangered future of Gintaman. <laughs> <laughs> uh, go ahead, Zen. Uh, so they, uh, we start with them in like the Shonen Jump editor's room uh and the guy the i assume it's the same director guy as the last Gintaman episode i didn't look but i don't know why it, it's it's a uh, it's a new guy because the previous guy is similar to <laughs> oh my god there's so much lore about this because in gintama the dude who was there this version of their job went on to one piece and so they have a oh, new guy yeah they say it in this episode yeah they? like he's on he's on one whatever the one one one, one park <laughs> one park, park. yeah He's on one part um, now. He's better than us. Well, no, yeah, not so the it, author though. Or the, or I'm talking about the oh, the the guy in the beginning. Who's yeah, like, yeah, the, fucking stuck. Oh yeah, that's the Shonen Jump editor. Yeah, that's the same yeah, guy yeah. from last time. Okay, yeah. Uh, and he's like, uh, you know, you're trying to use smut because your story sucks. You're gonna fucking cancel this shit because it's terrible. Um, and then they're on a train and. Gintoki is reading Jump on the train, and it's like the exact same setup as the last one, where he's like, wow, Gintaman fucking fuck. And the editor is right there like, oh. oh." Um, And he mentions, like, last time when I was helping, it was better. And then the the new guy who's desperate is like, please help me to make this not suck so it doesn't get cancelled. They meet up with uh... The, the author, like the monkey author, yeah, uh, yep. and they go to they go to his house because they want to figure out how to boost the ratings. So they have like a, um like a weird little hot look, like at the monkey guy's house, um, and everyone's like, oh, it's not it's not sexy enough, I think, and like they're they're going through all these different imagined things. Uh, and like the gorilla, the gorillas was the funniest one. It was like them playing sports, it was like football, like American <laughs> football, I think. Oh yeah, no, that that <laughs> like that that, 
Yeah, it's the Eye Shield Tone. That was the the series that the guy who is the current editor for uh, Ginta Man was working on before him, where he said like, "Oh yeah, I was working on like I think it's called like Pantu Shield Twenty One or something, where it's like a bunch of, a bunch of <laughs> girls playing football." Uh, and then they they like keep fucking around uh, at this meeting, and they end up getting super wasted. <laughs> And so they're like, ah, oh, yeah, we're great. We're awesome. See you later, bro. Let's leave. And they all just leave, and the monkey looks so sad. And then uh, Gintoki is reading what they created later, and he's like, eh, this is not very good. <laughs> yeah, that's the, that's the basics of it. Um, and I don't remember if this one... Oh, yeah, no, this one... And then it ends with my favorite episode preview ever, where it says, next preview. And it's just a, a staring shot of the house. And then it goes, uh, see you next episode. <laughs> it's maybe the funniest end episode of it where they're just like, ah, it's, it's fine. And it kind of leads up to the next one of how it starts, but. No, my favorite end episode bit is easily 138, but we'll talk about it when we get there. Oh, yeah. oh yes, actually, that one was good as well. <laughs> we'll get there, then we'll get there, but we'll start with this one. Um, one, I'm always a big fan of any jokes that involve <laughs> crude, barely parodies of Shonen Jump. Uh, <laughs> this one specifically, One Park, because there's a part where, like, they show the One Park protagonist, and he looks exactly like in Tokyo, except for he has the Luffy hat, and he's with a version of Chopper. <laughs> and I think the version of Chopper's wearing Goku's gi. <laughs> Um, yeah, 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 I think it was, you're right. Yeah, because, which is the, the starting joke of what they did the last time we have one of these, which is, like, the, the sure way to success is to basically just make Dragon Ball. <laughs> they said that the first time, too, didn't they? Yeah, they said, because, like, what, the... Like, if you want to, if you want to do good, just do Dragon Ball. <laughs> yeah, just do Dragon Ball. And in this one, they run into the issue of, like, we're near the end of the battle shown in arc. He's like, this is your fault, because you told us to follow... The Dragon Ball format, and this is what happens near the end of a <laughs> battle shonen, is that once the big fight kind of ends, you just start you know, wh- whiling down and stuff. He's like, whatever, it's fine. Um, I love the parody of Ice Shield 21, because it looked like it was just uh, foot- um, girls playing American football. <laughs> Which was a anime or manga I would gladly read. Um, there's also a reference to one of my favorite tropes, which is like... Any manga that starts at the beginning will slowly turn into a battle manga. It's their destiny. Yeah, uh, he's like, it's fate. <laughs> yeah, and the two examples they have here are maybe the two most famous examples. One is obviously Dragon Ball, which did not start off as kind of a bo- battle shonen. It was more of an adventure uh, shonen with original Dragon Ball that turned into just basically Battle <laughs> Battle Arc City after a yeah, while. Yeah, like, uh, right after, like, the... To be fair, it was before Z. It was, like, the World Martial Arts tournament. Yeah, yeah. Well, sections of it. That was always the parts that apparently always... Piccolo did the best Daimyo, part. basically, I would say, is when it became hard battle shonen from then onward. Good shit, too, though. We're not here to complain about how... <laughs> about the good shit of Dragon Ball, though. Yeah, no, uh, no, no. Evil King Piccolo arc is crazy good. Yeah, it is, but... it is, it is. And the other of uh, my favorite example is Kaneku Man, where Kaneku Man starts as an Ultraman parody, a very silly, dumb one, which I can't wait to, for when we get there, because it's a lot of fart jokes. That's what I remember the most about early Kaneku Man, is Kaneku Man being like, go save the world, Kaneku Man, and then he, like, farts and fucks up the entire <laughs> plot, and then the it only was, like, ten pages, and then <laughs> that was it for chapter one. <laughs> but then, obviously, they really hit their big, uh, big moment when Kaneku Man turned all about, like, galactic wrestling, <laughs> and that's where they're, that's where all the, everyone's favorite parts of Kaneku Man come from, is yes, from. Yes, that's what was adapted into English, right? With, like, like mm. Ultimate Muscle or whatever yeah, they call ul- it? Ultimate Muscle is the, um, the sequel to Kaneku Man, which is just muscle. Um, mm. that's, that follows his son, not him, and original Kaneku Man is in that show, but it's really confusing, because, like, Kid Muscle has last his last name is similar to the rival of Kaneku Man, but not actual. It's really weird. It's really bizarre what they do there. Like the English language of it makes it very unclear which one of these old men is his dad, <laughs> which one of these dudes was the original Kaneku Man, and who is his father. It's really funny. Uh, but yeah, th- those are probably the two most famous examples. And then he says, it's not always like that for Jump Manga. And then his two examples of that are Captain Subasa with his long ass legs. And uh, Doctor Slump, which has Aurelie in the back with the with her, with her two buddies, 
Which I'll say, at the end of Dr. Slump, there is actually a battle manga arc that is very similar to early Dragon Ball. It kind of feels that it, has even, it even has uh, Ozaru in it, where the <laughs> character who looks kind of like Yamcha, who is the basis of Yamcha in Dragon Ball, basically turns into a great ape form of some kind <laughs> and fights. And I was like, what the fuck? This is basically just early Dragon Ball. <laughs> It's it's wild. I, I as always, if you're a big fan of Dragon Ball, I always suggest checking out Doctor Slump. It's a hell of a ride to see early Toriyama bits, and especially if you can get the manga version where it actually had where he has like um, commentary about his time doing it. He's like, ah, oh, yeah. Um, during this part, uh, I ran out of jokes, um, so I started to look at all my discarded jokes that uh, my editor said wasn't funny and couldn't make its own series, and I just put him in this one. <laughs> Because at this point, I was so popular, nobody cared about what I did. <laughs> Fucking love Toriyama so much. <laughs> yeah, his level of just, like, I don't give a shit. Yeah, his level of, like, I don't, I don't give a shit. I'm, I'm gonna do my things. He is the working man's a manga creator. <laughs> that man will make a stew out of anything. Um... I really like the idea, their idea of how to get more people into Ginta Man is to make a sexy woman, because it actually is a good reflection of of, of how the women are in Gintama, which is like, there's none of them that are like super crazy sexy, they're all just kind of very violent women, and also, besides just violent, they're also very nicely written and good characters, actually, <laughs> but the idea here is that what, ah, the, people don't care about that, what they want is <laughs> the sexy woman to come in here, and that's the thing <laughs> that we're truly missing from the cast and i thought that was funny it's like oh yeah i guess they don't really have the traditional like sexy woman character um i was like that's funny and then their ideas for what constitutes like a sexy woman is like she obviously needs to be a childhood friend she needs to have big boobs and then at a certain point when they get drunker it gets crazier he's like i just want you to name all the things you find uh the best in a woman and we're gonna put them into one giant woman He's like, okay, she needs to have 36 different siblings. We need something that really stands out. That's one of them. He's like, she has to want to be a bride. He's like, that's a great idea. She needs. She's really into the sports. That's a great idea. She's a dentist. That's a great idea. <laughs> He's like, they keep adding more and more characteristics to this woman. That keeps going, oh, that's so good. You made such a good idea. Uh, she she's a single mother. That's a great idea. <laughs> Put it in there. She's one of those. <laughs> and then they actually show you the episode with her, which features the woman that they've created, which is like, oh yeah, Ginta Man finds his uh, childhood friend, and they get back together, and they have like this whole thing. And then the funniest thing is that she's wearing, <laughs> she keeps wearing her basketball <laughs> jersey. <laughs> Like the 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 childhood friend originally when the the monkey is thinking of a scenario of just when all he had was childhood friend and plays sports, he made that scenario where they're like their childhood friends and like he goes to her game and it's a lovely story and then when that ends, Gintoki's like that was a terrible idea that was so cliche <laughs> terrible terrible idea never do that again, um, but yeah when the actual episode of Gintaman with the the real Gintaman shows up it's uh really funny because they have this woman who's the amalgamation of everything and then she takes him on to like a train and then that's when he meets her twin and that's when he meets her like son he's like oh yeah also i'm divorced he's like what and then he's like he takes him into space he's like i did this all to find you and now we're gonna have a war because you see we i come from the planet (laughs) i'm an amato from the planet uh big boob and we're fighting our sister planet flat chest (laughs) the planet flat chest And then it turns into this war where there's just like a bunch of different copies of this woman who also is wearing a bridal outfit through the for the top end of it, versus the a version of her that just fl- is flat chested and they're like in giant robots and <laughs> the rope. It just turns into a whole thing and then that it ends with them saying like Ginta Man has saved the universe and then after that Kintoki's reading it and he goes like ah it's whatever it doesn't really <laughs> mean much to me. That's great, and then I also like the um, Kagura and Shinpachi versions of them in Ginza Man, where Kagura is just like a older version of herself that's slightly uglier, and uh, Shinpachi's version is just saying uh, "Dondaki" over and over again because <laughs> that's that what he... was maybe the funniest joke in it was that was all he was screaming. That was all. Like, he was... Anytime they did anything, Dondaki. <laughs> yeah. 
He was also doing the little thing he told him to say whenever you say it too. <laughs> you make sure you always have him do this specific pose. He was hitting it every single time. <laughs> and yeah, I I really enjoyed this one just cuz I am always a fan of whenever he gets to put on to I I think it's really funny that Gintoki is such a big fan of jump and the series he hates the most is his own. Yeah, is the the one that he is like his yeah, that's the only one where he's constantly talking shit on. He's not, like, talking shit about, like, any of the other jump mangas. It's only the one that's directly related to him that he's, like, constantly bashing every time he gets the chance, which is funny. Um, but yeah, I enjoyed this one. I was a kind of a very silly sit-back. I like seeing the giant monkey make his monkey magic. I like there's also a bit where he's, like explaining is like oh what do you want in a woman and he goes on for like i think a good minute and then at the end the translation is is that he thinks that she should have big boobs and he goes like what the hell (laughs) why was he talking for so long if that's all he cared to say it makes no sense but yeah i had a real good time seeing it it was a fun kind of goofy just like oh yeah this just shit's happening on here just sit back and let the wild ride go so i enjoyed it how did you feel zen Okay, it was just one of them kind of nothing episodes, you know, mm. or just just like some some okay jokes here and there, um, nothing really of plot value. It was about as Seinfeldian as you can get. Yeah, yeah, yeah I would. Yeah, I think you know, I think that's fair. It's a show about whatever the hell they need to talk about at this exact uh-huh. moment. <laughs> so let's go on to the next episode, which is episode. Uh, what, I also like the bit here where they're talking about um, he's talking shit about the because the the director who's now on one one park is like a big deal, and he says like basically the only reason you're even a big deal is it's all Oda Sensei. It's not actually you. He's like shut up. It's, <laughs> it's like you're being so hard carried by your <laughs> by your author. It's not even funny. <laughs> Let's move on to episode 136, which its English title is, It's Your House, You Build It. Go ahead, Zen. So, Hasegawa is talking to his wife, and he's embarrassed about being homeless, uh, because he, he, he like, gave up his apartment to avoid, uh, like, like, bill, bill collectors. Um, and so he was like, oh yeah, you know, I have a new apartment now. And his wife was like, oh great, I'll come visit. And he's like, Fuck, I don't have an apartment now. So he goes to Kentucky because he, he wants to try to find a place to live. Um, they find, like, a sleazy real estate agent, and they're like, all right, we're going to we're gonna find you a place to live. Um, and Hasekai was like, I want something cheap, and I want something nice. So they're going around to uh, a, a bunch of places. I think the first place was a doghouse, and... Uh, the guy was obviously pissed, and he's like, no, I want an actual house. Um, they go to a another dog house later on that has, like, a BDSM guy living in it, and he's like, listen, um, I'm not... What does Hasegawa say to him? Because it made me laugh out loud, and I don't remember what he said. I think when that guy was, like, really excited to see him, he was like, I am not your master. <laughs> yeah, the guy, yeah, he says, no one's, no one's here to turn you on. And then the the guy looks so sad, and he just turns around and gets back in the talk. So, he's like really hurt looking, um, and so he's like, "All right, you keep showing me dog houses. Can we see a house for people?" Um, and they're like, "Oh, this is kind of a nice place." And they go inside, and there's like blood and like horror movie shit all over the walls. <laughs> um, and Gintoki starts trying to talk Hasegawa into moving in after a while. Um, and then they start, like, fighting each other while horror movie shit is going on. There's, like, static TVs and shit happening. Mm. Um, and they're, like, fighting each other over trying to get the key. And there's a slow-mo shot <laughs> of the key falling to the ground. And then later on, uh, his wife shows up to visit because... She thought she got a postcard telling her to come visit Hasegawa at the at this place. It's super suspicious. She's like, "What is it? Oh, this postcard that told me to go to this unregistered address or something like that." It's very uh-huh. sneaky. <laughs> very sneaky of it. So continue on. Uh, that's where it ends, right? Doesn't she? It doesn't she like get the thing and she's like, "Oh, okay, I'll go." And then she gets taken by uh, the ghosts. Yeah, 
and, and then, then it's then, just like uh, ghosts and again Seinfeldian it's just nothing happens yeah though uh, this one I think actually has an excuse for it for it here because in the beginning of it um, which is really funny because I was like why the fuck did, did, does this look different they, they were talking about how they screwed up and they accidentally don't have an episode for this um, like, like, like something happened and they're, they're basically one story short from where they need to be so they need to like they're making the story up as they kind of go it's like oh they needed like 29 minutes to <laughs> finish the script for the current well, they're working on it in the back right now um, this is also where they have, like, the long bit where they start talking about, like, oh, yeah, foreign audiences, uh, it really hurts the sales when all they see is a still image. <laughs> it's like, oh, foreigners, they don't have any patience for anything or <laughs> for all that. And this also is maybe one of the fucking funniest bits of related to this, because I was like, why does the house look so different? And then it goes like, oh, yeah, watch this. And then all of a sudden, the, the, the house does a 360 spin. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, that's why it looks different. They made a 3D version of the fucking house so they could spin it. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's a, this is such a dumb good gag. I was like, oh, yeah, because it you can tell straight away because I was like, I've seen this image so many times. There's something different about it. Why does it look different? And when they did that, I was like, <laughs> fucking laughed. So funny. Uh, but yeah, let me go over some of the other things while, while I'm talking about it. Uh, I really like that, uh, Hasegawa's dog in this episode. He has, like, a little dog friend with him, because he's, I think, um, <laughs> when he got homeless, he got, what is it, the three treasures of the homeless? He got a cardboard box, he got a dog, and I don't remember what the last one was, but he says, like, oh, yeah, you have a dog, you have a cardboard box, you have this, you have the three treasures of being a homeless man. <laughs> Every single homeless person needs this as their ultimate kit. And whenever Hasegawa was freaking out, the dog is, like, right there on his side, like, freaking out with him. <laughs> Wait, Another good bit is, um, I think, it, I think it might be the same house as the, the BDSM guy, but it's, it's decorated with badges. And they're like, it's really stylish now. Yeah, that, that was just before <laughs> that. <laughs> where they say, oh, it's really stylish. <laughs> it was, but it was in the same scene as that one, yeah, for sure. Um, I like when he starts describing him because like you're like the Onion Knight because you're jobless. He's like you're jobless, but you have a job. You're kind of like the Onion Knight, which is the strongest job in all of Final Fantasy three, and it's the first job, and that's yours. He's like, first of all, I'm not. <laughs> Why are you calling me the Onion Knight? They like, they go back to this a whole bunch, and then when he actually is trying to look for a house, he says his occupation is Onion Knight. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, my job Onion Knight. Oh, yeah, what do you do? He's like, uh, he cuts onions or something like they make up like such a fake fucking job for being an onion knight he's like oh yeah i've heard of that before um this old man realtor i thought was also kind of funny i like that bit where he's like crying and he's like oh my god finally someone who understands the worth of a house and he gives them the key and then they i've never seen someone that shared my love of a room (laughs) yes and then gitoki does the same thing keeping in the same size like you know what i think someone who really really would needs this a uh, room would be best to have it and he gives it to uh Hasegawa and then Hasegawa goes mm. but I think this truly already has a person that can really f- make this room shine and he gives it back to the old man and they just keep they also have like a white light on their face every single time it happens as they start passing around this fucking key because nobody wants to actually stay in this house um I also like the bit where Gintoki really wants him to keep the house um the murder house and he starts acting like yeah, the horrible murder house he's like why are you acting so nonchalant about this it's clearly just the murder house he's like all right let me give let me hit you up with this analogy and he hits him with maybe the funniest like ah, uh, oh okay <laughs> analogy in the world he's like this house is kind of like you know when you have like an a, you a, a, there's a girl who's unpolished and innocent and when you enter school and then summer vacation hits and when you come back she has like dyed hair and ear piercings and you wonder to yourself what ha- you want to ask her what happened to you what happened to you during summer but you don't ask her for it cuz you know you'll hate it if you ask this room is a lot like women you don't ask the questions it's just assumed that you know something happened and it's best just to leave it as is <laughs> And it's the most like this is like the and he even he's like this is such a stupid analogy for a house <laughs> this is for a clearly murdered in house that you're trying to make me stay in and it's not helping me 
It's not. I love a... the, the like obvious murder house. It's like blood all over the floors. And yeah, yeah there's everything everywhere. Yeah, it is so obvious that someone died in this house. <laughs> And that's the reason why he wants to pawn it off so badly. And Gintoki's just like so tired of helping Hasegawa that he's just like, oh, you know what? This house is fine. <laughs> you can you could totally live here. It's fine. You know, there's nothing to worry about. Don't think about it. What it's does a- he say to him? He says something to him that's like, this is your fault anyway. So it's just live in the murder house. This is your fault, Onion Knight, I think is what he says. Something like that. <laughs> it's like, this is uh, all the troubles that have happened is because of you or something. But yeah, he tries to definitely blame Hasegawa for it. Um, I also like the opening phone call where he's talking to his wife, because it's nice to see that him and his wife are still keeping in talk- contact after he hit him with the Hasegawa buster uh, last time we saw her. <laughs> the most forgiving woman yeah. in all of Gintama <laughs> is Hasegawa buster. buster. I forgot about the Hasegawa buster. Yeah, he hit her straight up with the Hasegawa Buster last time we saw her. I'm glad that they're still on talking terms and she's very understanding. Um, And yeah, again, I really like seeing Hasegawa in anything, so it's just kind of nice to have an episode with him. And this definitely feels like we haven't used Hasegawa in a while. Why don't we just talk to Hasegawa for a bit? Oh, man, I completely forgot the fucking Hasegawa Buster episode. That shit was so funny. It when is. he jumps to save that woman from the train and he lands doing the Hasegawa Buster. <laughs> that was the first... That that scene literally popped back into my mind when I heard her voice. I was like, oh, it's good. I'm glad they're still on speaking terms because this man fucked her up with that Hasegawa Buster. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah. I enjoyed it. It was a very, similar to the last one, it's a very just like, ah, sit back and kind of just watch the silly jokes happen. I did think a little bit of the, there's like a really like super specific Japanese joke about like, like calling, I'm looking for this kind of room, which is the lead up to why he keeps giving, sending him to a doghouse because they start similarly. I just couldn't understand that bit at the beginning where they're like, I'm looking for this kind of room. L something two W or something. It's like, oh, okay, I got you. And he keeps sending them to the wrong places, which is the doghouse. Um, I liked it when he sent him to the doghouse because I thought it was funny and the the excuses he made, like, oh yeah, you know, this is for your dog. <laughs> Obviously, this is why I sent you here. It's not because I don't know <laughs> who gave you that idea. It's very clear he doesn't know. But yeah, uh, very enjoyable. I just kind of sat back and liked it. What do you think, Zen? It was good. Yeah, it was, it was, again, kind of a nothing episode, but, like, it wasn't so far down the meta humor line that it was just, like, kind of funny. Like, like I thought it was funny when the fancy version of a doghouse was a doghouse with, like, stickers on the outside. (laughs) Um, (laughs) I really like how sad the the BDSM guy got when Hasegawa was like, I'm not here to turn you on. He looked, like, genuinely really really hurt, (laughs) uh, which made me laugh. And then uh, the murder house, the fight over the murder house when the key falls in slow mo. I thought it was really funny. Yeah, and that that bit too, where like the dog is freaking out because he senses something, and they're still fighting, and then just fucking a horror show happens. <laughs> it's really good. But yeah, I think it's definitely more enjoyable, and I think it's mostly because uh, Hasegawa being broke jokes are never not funny. <laughs> I think they found the perfect man for anything bad that happens. <laughs> Things are generally pretty funny, and that's uh, Hasegawa to a T. Now let's move on. I, also, I should mention, because it happens in the end preview and I liked it, um, Sachan mentions that it's the third year of their series and she hasn't she's only been in three episodes she has not actually shown up in three months <laughs> that's true i guess i don't think about her not being there because yeah she's always in the OP. like the main cast scroll yeah yeah, yeah. and i was like yeah because i was like oh no she's always there she's right she's right there at the beginning getting kicked by gintoki that's her bit that's all she that's all you need for the most part but yeah, she's like, I, you know, I haven't been here for three months. I should have my own episode. And she does in the, in the next bit here. So let's move on to the next episode, which is 137, uh, which is a two-parter. Not a two-parter. It's part A and part B. Part A is called 99% of men aren't confident in convincing their love. Why don't you go ahead and tell us all about that, son? Tell us about the insecurities of men. Let's get really into it. <laughs> Just kidding. Oh, Tell me uh, 
It's it's a Sachan episode where, uh, well, I guess it's a Sachan Anaconda episode where they are trying to once again prove their love to Gintoki and Otai. Uh, she ends up dressing up as a giant piece of cake uh, to get his attention because he was at a cake shop and he has like a key, a free coupon for for cakes, mm-hmm. and she's like, oh, he'll use the coupon on me, and uh, she. He like kicks the absolute shit out of her, <laughs> and she goes flying out of the the store covered in blood. It's um, such a good kick. It does like an explosion. <laughs> like, yeah, I, like, um, she uh, she's feeling sad, and Kondo and her bump into each other, um, and they're both kind of like they're doing that thing they do where they're like, "You suck, but I'm great actually," um, <laughs> and. <laughs> And so they decide that they're gonna uh, they're gonna make a bet, and they're gonna um, they're gonna try to make it so that the they both like the ones that they're stalking, they're gonna go to the other one and say, oh, they found someone else, and they're gonna like make them make them jealous, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, uh, Sachan goes to Otai and is like, yeah, I have the. I have the love letter that's proof that Kondo is in love with someone else, and it's like written in military code. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, and then she shows uh, like a like a collar, and Sarto was like, "Yes, this is it." Otai, because Otai has like a, she's not like happy about it or sad. She's just kind of like, "Oh, hmm, okay." Um, Kondo's a great guy. Yeah. And then Kondo is following Gintoki, who gets pissed off very quickly because his version of following Gintoki is just, like, loudly walking behind him, hiding his <laughs> face behind stuff. This Looney, t- Looney Tune has yeah. bit. <laughs> and, uh, so Kondo's like, oh, yeah, um, you know, she doesn't, she doesn't like you anymore. She's found her real true love. And then Kondo's like, haha, I, I have actually done it. Um, and so then they they decide that it didn't they realize it didn't work so they're like talking shit to each other and then they dress up as a couple in like a masochist clothes like leather like a leather couple mm-hmm. um and they show off and like oh we're actually together now not you two and they're both like great <laughs> <See ya." laughs> uh <laughs> so happy for them <laughs> very supportive <laughs> And then, uh, so they they reveal that it was fake and everything, uh, and they, they talk about, like, oh, these are our, um, our real true loves and stuff, and so they have, like, this moment where they both show up, like, uh, Gintoki walks over in front of Sachan, and Otai walks in front of Kondo, and they're both like, oh my god, I love you so much, and then they look up, and they have brought the people who they assume that they actually love, based on the little description they gave earlier. Um, the, 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 I, I know the, the, that Otai brings Catherine, and I think in Tokyo brings Tatsugawa. Yep. Yeah. 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 <laughs> they like, they I do. brought you. I brought you your true love. And yeah, that's where it is. This is so funny because the the the, 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 the way Ta- it brings in Catherine because he's like, oh yeah, no, I brought the person who he said because she described him as like violent not main not main not main heroin worthy like there's something like, like all, when Sacha's describing her she uses nothing but negatives and she's like oh she's not talking about me she's talking about Catherine <laughs> she brings it <laughs> and I think all uh, Kondo says is like oh yeah he's someone who's worthless uh, Hasegawa is the most worthless I can think of you're obviously in love with Hasegawa <laughs> Ah oh, man, this oh, one so good. It is so for this episode again. Oh, I think we've made it previously, but it's really funny when Kondo and Sachan go together because they're the ultimate like <laughs> they're both the exact same, but they can't stand each other. <laughs> yeah, they're they're identical people, but they hate each other, and they're convinced that they're the good one. Exactly, and the other one's the bad one. Like the other one, he's like, "Oh, you're desperate." He's like, "What the fuck are you talking about? I'm desperate. You're desperate." It's <laughs> like I'm not desperate. I'm in love. There's a difference between our best. Do not compare me to you. 
Uh, I like the opening bit with uh, Sachan trying to go to the cake because she's also dressed herself up as the biggest cake, and Kentucky just is yeah, completely. Yeah, she's the giant uh, strawberry shortcake slice. Yeah, and it's very clear that she wants him to pick him, and he's just like uh, ignoring the fact that she's even existing, and um, she's like making up scenarios in her head. She's like, "Oh, he's just trying to hold. Me. It's the masochist in him. He's just trying to hold, j- holding me back." And then she imagines how he'll end up picking her, and it's like he has like a cartoonish mustache and top hat, like an evil side, like an ear evil Baron of some kind. He's like, oh, yes, I'm going to get you now. I'm going to eat you. I always save my the best dessert for last. He's like, ah. Oh. And then when he when she actually tries to be like, all right, you can have me now. And he just, like, fucking kicks her to the curb so quick. Just doesn't want to deal with her in any capacity. The extreme violence he has towards Sachan is always really funny. And this bit here where he kicks her and then it immediately explodes on impact. Had me fucking laughing. <laughs> it's so funny yeah, to like see. like how she went out the automatic door and then it opened. <laughs> so yep. that she could pass through into the street. <laughs> Which is very funny. Um, I like the bit where uh, after they kind of try and ruin the other one's life. Because they start talking about like, oh yeah, what's truly best? Because you're that. They, they start talking about the way they live. Because like, you know what? Uh, one, what a woman really wants is a man who will treat her like shit. Not like shit, but like a masochist in some game. That's basically what she's saying. Is like, a women really want a guy who will treat him like shit. He's like, no, no, no. You need someone who's hard to get. That's what they actually want. He's like, no, that's not what they want. Because that's basically what their two different approaches are. Is that Sunshine wants Gintoki because of how much he treats her like shit. And he wants t- uh, Tai because of how hard she actually is to get. He's like, no, that's the actual way to do it. So when they try and do it to the opposite way of like, oh yeah, this is how we're going to do it. And the way it just completely blows up and they're just like, ah, yeah, that's, that's great. Like, the, the amount of like, oh, that, that's great news to hear that they found someone. <laughs> is really funny but then when they get, relay it back to him they treat it as like oh yeah he's he's i could feel it in his voice he's he's ready to chase after you but we need to have that next level step yeah when they're both like oh yeah this is perfect oh yeah we got him exactly where you we want did him. it for sure we're gonna make him chase after you i've set up the perfect scenario <laughs> um i also like at one point that when they're talking shit to each other sachan calls him the, the a yamcha He's like, I'm not Yancha. I'm at least Master Roshi. <laughs> and then I said, wouldn't you rather be Yamcha than Master Roshi? At least Mas- at least Roshi, uh, Yamcha was with Bulma for a bit before he completely dropped it. But Master Roshi was like watching women on yoga videos. <laughs> That's his main thing when it comes to women. <laughs> uh, if I was to choose between the two, I would definitely prefer to be Yamcha. Yeah, having a little bit of a normal relationship is better than whatever the fuck Master Roji's got going on. It's <laughs> uh, fair. Yeah, that's probably a fair estimate. Yeah. And I also really like that reveal when they're both in that fucking gimp getup <laughs> and they're going for it. Oh, what was the thing that Gintoki says when he says the description of Sachan of why she's a good woman is like, ah, uh, that makes sense that she would, uh, that someone would fall for her. She does have, uh, she does have huge boobs, glasses, this, glasses. And he keeps like bringing up that she wears glasses. <laughs> like that's the only thing he's really focused on, uh, when it comes to her. But yeah, when they're dressing up as that, uh, as the, like, liver couple, and they're just, like, super supportive of, of, of them, it's like, Tay's like, oh, I'm gonna tell everyone, and I think what was a really funny bit with Gintoki, he has, like, a yes and her pillow, yes, a, he has, like, a yes and no pillow for men and women, and he gives the yes to Kondo, and he gives the no to Sachan. Yeah. <laughs> Ugh, such a funny dig at her, even when she's, in theory, happy with someone that they love. <laughs> And yeah, I also really like that bit where they're in the where they're both just like, oh man, that that really blew up in our fucking face. <laughs> like when they're just both sad and depressed on the beach, and they're just like, uh, you know, uh, I'm I'm just gonna go. See you later. And like he just walks up and sadly walks away in this gimp outfit. <laughs> <laughs> And it's so funny because she like looks at him and he's like, oh, he's so sad. And she comes to the same realization. It's like I really fucked up. Um he really did love her. I have to go make this right. And then when he looks at her and dejected in the sand and he comes to the same conclusion, I actually thought that was really nice (laughs) where they found out like, uh, you know what? They were happy the way things were, which is basically what they were trying to prove, which was that 
they were trying to say that each other wasn't happy in their current situation, and then when they changed the situation, they saw how depressed they were. They're like, oh, you know what? I need to actually fix this. And it's in the same Gintama way of like trying to make things right and then ending it in the most like <laughs> still jokey way possible. But I thought it was actually very nice that the both of them come to the realization of like, I fucked up really badly. This person was in love with someone, and I basically fucked with their love. And I know if that happened to me, that would be bad because I'm going through that shit right now. <laughs> so I need to make it right. <laughs> so it's kind of nice to see them both come to the same conclusion and then both not get what they want when they have the confession. Because it really does seem like it's building it up to them being uh, confessing to them and, and having some closure to this. And then the, the reveal, t- the one-two punch of it's Catherine and <laughs> Hasegawa was funny. Um, so yeah. I also like how when... Uh... It's revealed as Catherine. Catherine's like, ew, gross. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, which should be the the natural reaction of Kondo, but he doesn't say it when he sees Catherine. Yeah. Yeah, I think she says something like, oh, you think you're good enough to have my love? Yeah, yeah she's like, you think you're good enough for me? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Catherine, the worst of us all. <laughs> But yeah, I thought it was a very enjoyable part one of it. It was kind of nice to see these these two have their dynamic back and forth for a good chunk of time. It it had, it was the perfect length for, for both of them for both of this bit. I think. What do you think, Zen? Uh, it was good. Yeah, it was it was better than the last two. the The jokes were funny. Um, there was nothing nothing weird in you know when Gintoki or when Gintama goes into purely uh. We're making a silly episode. Sometimes it can get <laughs> a little weird. None of that. Uh, it was just genuinely extremely funny. Um, Kondo and Sachan are both very funny. I like their rivalry over who is the biggest creep between the two of them. <laughs> it's, it's good. Yeah. It's a good bit for sure. And that's part A. So let's go to part B, where it's people who don't believe in Santa are the ones who want to believe you contentious bastard. Which is a follow up <laughs> to <laughs> Santa and Ben. They're back. I hope you remember all their bits from that episode almost like two years ago in their time. Uh, I sure don't. No, this is another uh, Christmas episode though, because it aired on December eighteenth. <laughs> so they yeah, have... I was. So it is the same Santa because I knew there was the same, the old Santa. I was like, this has got to be the same Santa, right? Yeah, it's the same. It's the same two dudes. Yeah. same Santa and the reindeer. Okay. All right, go ahead, Zen. Tell us all about what happens here. So uh, Santa is promoting a bar, and he uh, doesn't have any money. And, and there's a debt collector that's like, "I need you to, you know, you need, we need your fucking, you need to pay right now." Um, the reindeer shows up and ends up paying it off like immediately for him. Uh, and then they meet up with Kentucky, who's like, "Oh, okay." Uh, so they go back to this snack bar, and they're they're eating at this snack bar. Um, Santa quit being Santa, and so he's just like a like a homeless guy now. Uh, but the reindeer is like super rich. He's like a, I think he's a debt collector, isn't he? He is. He says, yeah, and yeah. realtor. Yeah, he's like Wait, super rich now. <laughs> the most evil. <laughs> yeah, but uh, he's like, you know, I'm super rich now, but I don't feel fulfilled doing what I do because he he liked being a Christmas guy. Um, so they, uh, Gintoki gets a sleigh for them, um, and he's trying, like, oh, you know, you guys should use it, why don't you use it, come on, and like, I don't know, man, um, and then there's a woman who's, like, on the street going into labor, um, and uh, apparently, according to this, it's the same woman from mm-hmm. the first episode. <laughs> It is. Um, it, it is the same like, same woman shit. from the last bit from Santa. It's the <laughs> it's the the mother that the the girl would like them to be nicer. It's the same lady. Uh, and they're like, we don't we don't have time to wait for an ambulance to come and get her. We gotta go now. So they load her up in the in the sleigh, which is like a rickshaw looking kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, Musashi's and house. Then, yeah, and then. Uh, the reindeer man like rips his clothes off and he's like, all right, let's do it. Uh, and they like rush off and uh, they, they get the, get her to the hospital where she delivers the baby and everything. Uh, and then 
Kentucky and the crew are watching TV, and there's a Christmas special on TV, and they can hear the Santa bell, the sleigh bells ringing in the background, because it's restored their passion for being Christmas people. Mm -hmm. And that's how it ends. Uh, This one, I kind of liked, I actually did remember this episode from the last time we talked about him, because I remember Ben, (laughs) this reindeer dude, I remember from the last time we had, (laughs) he showed up. But I like that this episode was a follow-up of how the previous one uh, ended. Because if um, you probably don't remember how it ended, because it was a while ago. But it ended with Kentucky giving them advice of, like, they should dress up as, like, basically burglars <laughs> to do Christmas yep. uh, stuff. <laughs> Christmas crimes. And that led to their downfall. <laughs> and he was like, oh, yeah, Santa, everything went bad for me from there. I'm basically a trout. And Ben obviously is able to have money, but he doesn't have anything. But I kind of like the fateful meeting at the beginning where Kentucky's like, oh, yeah, I know you guys. Hey, isn't this weird? All three of us again here together on basically uh, Christmas again. Let's hang out. Um, and when they're hanging out, I think it's very nice where they start talking about it. Uh, where they talk about how hard it is for them because like this clearly you just it's clear you just want to go back to being Santa. It's like nah, man. Nobody believes in Santa no more. I just can't be Santa no more. <laughs> this is just not possible. No one has the Christmas spirit anymore. A very common uh, Santa esque plot line. But I like the, the, the how they tried to start getting him back up there. I like that when he gave him a sleigh, he used the exact same sleigh as last time, which was Musashi's house. And that's when they have that same bit again where Musashi goes like, this is my house. What do you don't be gentle with it because I live here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I like Ben when he sees it he's like you know I make money right I can just buy a sled I can buy a real sled <laughs> not whatever you got here he's like ah whatever money corrupts don't get it that way this one is perfect for what you have <laughs> and yeah I like seeing the um, the little girl again and then the mother who's even while she's giving birth she's fucking violent as hell she's like it's insanely like um She's like a demon, and she's like screaming through do the childbirth plane. And when they get her into the hospital, I think it's a really good joke where I think it's Gintoki says, "I'm really glad the baby is cute." And she's like, "What the hell does that mean?" <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, don't worry about it. And yeah, I am a sucker for a good Christmas story. So when the little girl says, "Thank you, Santa," and they're just like, <laughs> it's just a very nice like little Christmas story ending at the end. He's like, "Oh yeah, you know what." Santa will always be there for a good girl. And it ends with, like, again, Toki going, like, I just want to hear the sleigh bells ring. And you see that Santa and Ben are back doing Santa stuff. It's a very just nice, like, oh, yeah, Santa. (laughs) Go back to being Santa stuff. I thought it was very cute at the end. So I ended up liking it. I didn't think it was, like, as funny as the previous one. But I thought it was just like, ah, you know what? It's not. It's still six months away from Christmas, but I can enjoy a little Christmas spirit right now. Yeah, I'm always it's hard not to. It's hard not to like a little, a little Christmas vibes, you know. Yeah, both of us big fans of the Christmas vibe as well. <laughs> Where, if you've ever seen um, the video we did for Frosty, you can tell that me and Zen have a lot of care for the Christmas spirit. So <laughs> this one really hits for me, and I liked it. How do you feel, Zen? Uh, similarly, I just, I don't know, I like the Christmassy vibes, it's, it's always cute when that happens, I like when the reindeer was like, yeah, I'm a rich piece of shit now, but my, like, I got no Christmas cheer. <laughs> um, so real it's, for it's that. Just, yeah, it is so real for that. Uh, it's just, it was good, it was cute. Yeah, yeah, nothing more to say. Perfectly fine, part B, I'm glad part A was funny and that's good enough for me most of the time. Ah, now let's go on to whoa, strap in for this one. I'm going to say right now, before we get into it, there's probably some deeper things that you can talk about in this episode. Uh, about the treatment of certain people. But you know what? As me and Zen, both one of us being white and the other one being Hispanic, probably not the greatest people to talk about that. But we will just talk about the jokes on this one because I did think that this was actually... <laughs> It towed the line perfectly fine enough. It is not as bad as some of the other anime that have been out there who have done similar jokes to this. Let's talk about 138, Zen. Let's talk about... Um, le- oh, the- actually, funny enough, that's the English title. Let's talk about the old days once in a while. <laughs> Go ahead, Zen. Set us up for this one. So, the crew is... Cl- it's like a spring cleaning episode. Everyone's cleaning. Everyone's doing their thing. 
Um, the the crew uh, looks through the um, like off. They're in like Kentucky's office space, uh, and a picture falls out, and they're like, "Oh, who's this picture?" And there's like a Kentucky with a pretty girl. And so Kyra's like, oh, it's pretty gay that he had that picture of a girl in his room. <laughs> isn't it a um, little gay? <laughs> isn't it a little gay that he has this picture still? Of a woman? That's um, <laughs> <laughs> really funny. Um, and uh, so they're like, oh, that's weird. And then Gintoki's like, oh, that's the person uh, that used to be in, in the old Odd Jobs crew. You guys are technically the new Odd Jobs crew. There was one before you. And so he starts, like, telling stories about them all. Like, after we have this weird cold open of a guy, like, committing an assassination with a, with a, what's it, like, a, a, psycho, a psycho gun? Psycho, they call it a psycho gun, which is a reference to Space Cobra. The um, On his arm. And they were, like, running through. Uh, like, he committed some assassination, and then he's fighting some kind of monster. And then Kentucky's, like, telling stories. And he's like, oh, yeah, this is my old crew. Uh, and he's like, uh, her equivalent would basically be like Catherine. She worked down, down in the shop, and then she would help me out sometimes. Um, Catherine catching strays when this is like, man, yeah. Catherine's job used to mean something. <laughs> yeah, Catherine's job used to be good, huh? Um, <laughs> it used to belong to someone that was worth it. Yeah. And then uh, they were, like, talking through the other people. Because Pach's like, well, who had my job? And then they, it, it was revealed to be the guy with the psycho gun arm. And then they, he keeps revealing more people that had the their old positions, and it's all people with psycho gun arms. <laughs> like the same guy a bunch of times. <laughs> um, Kanamaru is the name Sadaharu. of the Yeah, the yeah, Sadaharu. Yeah, even Sadaharu. <laughs> um, and they're like, oh yeah, it's... Uh, and then one of them was a, a woman as well who like, got cheated on by her husband, but it's just the guy again. Um, <laughs> no, no, it's a, it says a girl. It's a Ikasawa. But they look the same. They look very similar. But the <laughs> but, but the, uh, the the reason they say is that her when she's when she's revealed uh, where her alcohol is is where the psycho gun is. And she's like, that's exactly the same as the others. Yeah. Also, there's a there's a good joke where Kagura is like get, gets mad because that's like her equivalent, and she's like, don't don't fuck with me. And Gintoki's like, no, why are you so upset? She quit drinking. <laughs> <laughs> she stopped drinking and she's got alimony now. Um, which was good. Mm-hmm. And then uh, they're looking back through the old pictures more and more. And they're realizing like that none of them really gave a shit about Gintoki. And they were all just like around. Um Because eventually the, they all leave. And the picture is just Gintoki sitting on the ground like sad and alone. <laughs> um even yeah even the dog version of the dude he eventually yeah leaves. they all just get up and leave and then uh they so they beat him up in annoyance and then um gintoki's like laying there and there's pictures of the new crew everywhere and one of them falls down and sadaharu finds it and he gives it to gintoki and gintoki smiles and puts it back where they found the other one the picture of the woman uh, and it's a picture of the new crew, the the four of them all together. And Gintoki's like, I hope this year is a good one. Yeah. It's a good way to start the new year off for for something like this. But for a very silly episode, it was actually a very nice way of ending it. Because they do show all the pictures or like all the stuff we've seen in the anime so far. Um, like characters from specific arcs, like the Shinsen Gumi arc and stuff like that. Like all of them go through. It was just kind of a nice way of going. Like, oh man, I remember that. <laughs> so many episodes, so many dudes from so many episodes. At this point, 138 of them. It was really nice to see it again, and I thought it was a very nice ending to it. And then, that's not it. There's more. Oh no, I told you to stop watching at the ED, right? Yes. Ah, uh, the ED. They... Well, no, okay. There, there. I saw the bit where they do the, um, they redo. This is my favorite joke of the week, where they redo the very first episode again, and this time it's just all the guys with the psycho gun arms, <laughs> as the people watching Gintoki fight the alien over the um, parfait. <laughs> yes, that that's good. And then the um, the ED in the beginning, it's the regular crew, and then by the end of it, it's the old the old odd jobs crew <laughs> are in the mm-hmm. positions of everyone else, which is really funny. Um, this episode, let's get into it. Okay, 
So, uh, the only the only bit I mention because I feel like the vast majority of the jokes are. It's not just the fact that uh, Kanemaru is a dude with a psycho gun. It's the fact that Kanemaru is also a guy with a psycho gun and is also black. <laughs> and so are the other three characters who are joining this crew at the end. <laughs> They're all um, completely different from Sadaharu, Shinpachi, and um, Kagura. And then Jigen Toki takes it as like, oh no, there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> so they, were, they were a really good group of dudes. <laughs> And I thought it was really funny when they're doing the whole episode bit where they're like going for the old ones and then it's just replacing them with the with the new with the old crew because he's like this anime would never sell because they have them on like the cover of it and it's like Gintoki followed up with the with the other two dudes and the girl and it's really funny because they start doing one of the arc they start doing the Tama arc. And when they're doing the Tama arc, I was, like, so fucking flat Because it really does feel like, for the vast majority, the joke is, isn't it kind of funny that <laughs> this dude's black, but they're never actually making any black jokes. It's just that he is black. And then when they're doing the uh, the Tama bit, they go, like, um, hey, look. They, 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 they're doing the, the goodbye to Tama, and they're trying to stop her. And then they reveal Tama, and Tama is also black. <laughs> And I was like, what the fuck is going on? Oh my I... god, wait. There was one joke that I thought was was very funny. Uh, it's when they first reveal the guy to, mm-hmm. the, to the crew. And they're looking at it, and he goes, this guy looks like he's right out of downtown LA. <laughs> he's a brother. He's a brother. He's a brother, yeah. <laughs> he's he's a downtown. brother. And I was like, oh my god. I think it ends up does... It, it skews a line very soon, because honestly, when I saw the... Tama version of it and the the version of the episode where it's just black dude. I was like, oh, I kind of would watch this still though. This kind of is kind of awesome. Um, it, I couldn't help but think about when when Shimpachi basically was like, "Oh my god, he's black." I couldn't stop thinking about all the memes of the uh, yellow hair and Miles from across <laughs> the spider. The the fucking the theme immediately played in your head. <laughs> Oh god! When it, when it, have you seen this? It's a fucking stupid TikTok, but it's the one where it's he's like, um, it's Miguel. And he's like, I respect all Spider Men, and Miles is like, does that include me? And then it's Miguel going, No, you're. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> and I was like, Oh my god! That's all I could think about was Shimpachi saying. Damn, that. It, it does feel like at certain points I was like, you know what, Shimpachi? It feels a little bit racially motivated. What <laughs> you're doing? Little weird, right? It's just like, a little bit. He's a, and they put brother in quotes. Too. Brother, <laughs> which is oh. like that's a bit like why is it in quotes? It is. It's really. It's really something. And then at one point he starts shit. This is maybe my one of my favorite jokes on here. He starts shit talking him because he's like, oh, th- in this bit right here when they got their order mixed up, he should have said this. Obviously, he can't say it because only thing that foreigners can say are "fuck you" and "oh my god." And then he does that exact bit. He's like, wait, he knows Japanese. <laughs> He immediately gets shit on for thinking he doesn't know how to do this. He's like, no, he can, <laughs> he can do that. Uh, but I love it that the fact that they were like, oh, yeah, he played Shimpachi's crew. You know, he was kind of a jokester. And they cut to him doing a joke, and it's just him going, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. Oh, so, so good. But yeah, the a lot of the jokes here are... <laughs> It really does feel like they're having an issue here. Is that the issue here is that they're a black of some kind and they're different? But then Gintoki's actually is like, no, it's completely fine. I don't know what the hell you guys are going so on about this. They're basically fulfilling your roles to the T. They're perfect. <laughs> like when he says, like, oh yeah, no, she's alcoholic, but it's okay. She got alimony. She was divorced. It's perfectly fine. But then I love the bit too where they all just start ignoring Gintoki <laughs> and they're like doing their own thing. Like, um, the the girl who was playing Kagura's version in Shinpachi obviously start hooking up in one of the pictures. And then they're saying, like, obviously they have a thing for each other. You can tell it very clearly in in the pictures here that Gintoki's being ignored. It's like, listen, whatever they were doing, I told them that they had to <laughs> get in line and get do their job. You know what I'm saying? Made sure that they were in line. But it's very clear that they left him. And then I, uh, the funniest bit was when one of the funnier bits is when he's when they reveal what happened to the old crew. And basically, what happened is that Gintoki got so fed up with being ignored is that he tossed them over the river. 
Yeah, that's right. He killed them. I completely forgot. He yeah, he tosses them, them over. And then this is also the reveal of like what happened to the beautiful woman. He also tossed her over the river. Yeah, he killed all of them. He's like, why did you toss her in? Why would she wasn't even involved? <laughs> oh my god, I completely fucking forgot that he murdered them all at the end. Yeah, he does. And I think they do end up surviving, or at least one of them ends up surviving of some kind. Because they eventually show like... Uh, the 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 end bit there, but I really did like the all the flashbacks he was having, where or the or thinking about the times about like oh how what would I do with them, and one of them is him dealing with Prince Hada, and he's just like completely completely shitting on him, <laughs> like he's attacking yeah, him, he's like got him in his mouth. Yeah, he's like oh eating, and then the girl who's doing the cocker of it, he's like I will eat the seaweed. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, also, I like that they all speak English in the way that a lot of Japanese anime do. Where he's like, I remember this samurai. <laughs> it's very clearly a Japanese person saying, talking yeah, English. Yeah, he's like, katana. Katamara. <laughs> <laughs> I am uh, the there's god. Also, there's a good bit, too, where um, when the guy gets the wrong order at the restaurant, and Shinpachi's uh, like, oh my god, what? Why? Since when did he order that? Why are you eating lasagna? And the guy gets the wrong order, and he just goes, oh shit, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, oh my god. And, then, and Kagura's like, no, he, you won't be able to get anything out of him. He's just saying western words, like, oh fuck. <laughs> That's all he knows. And then he immediately follows it up with him saying it in Japanese. Perfect Japanese, yeah. Oh, so... And so. the beginning, where he's just screaming fuck you over and over is really funny, too. It is. It is really good. Um, I also like the bit. There's a bit here because it's very clear that Kagura is jealous of the beautiful woman, as you could tell when the minute she's like, I don't know, kind of fruity for him to keep a picture of a beautiful woman <laughs> hidden from everyone. Because originally that they was think. so funny when she's like, Isn't that kind of gay? <laughs> it's a little gay, right? When, because I guess their original idea was that that was his girlfriend originally. He's like, Whatever, you know, maybe they broke up. He's like, Hmm, isn't it kind of gay to keep a picture of a woman that you were with? <laughs> A feminine, but no. And then it's revealed that what she is, and then it's really funny because Kagura is in the back trying to imitate her. He's like, "What does she have that I don't?" And then like she's like putting oranges to pretend that she has boobs because <laughs> it's mm-hmm. very clear that she's very self conscious about this beautiful woman that used to be in the th- <laughs> in the team, <laughs> even though it wasn't uh, her exact job. But yeah, I thought this episode was uh, hilarious. <laughs> it was really good. Um, a lot of anime can probably do wrong with a similar premise to this, <laughs> and go. That's for sure. That's for fucking sure. But I thought they walked a very good line. I thought it was very funny. I didn't. A lot of the jokes seem to be more focused on the fact that they're foreigners more than they're actually black. It just so happens that these characters are black at the same time. But it still is really good. And again, that Tama joke where it's just Tama, but she's just straight up black. <laughs> That's the only difference. Everything else about her was the same. And then they go, like, her too? <laughs> like, what? She was also different in the, your version of yeah, the that, uh, Yeah, when he starts reminiscing, and it's just all the memories that they have, but with these characters instead. Yeah, when when he starts, like, saying, like, uh, when uh, Kanamaru starts going, like, oh, what, if, uh, what if I'm ruining my sister's happiness? Like, they're doing it from when they went to go save Ty. <laughs> and they just do it with those new characters instead. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's so funny. Yeah, and like I said, very, very easy to do this one wrong, but I thought they did it perfectly in this, where I didn't feel too bad, uh, <laughs> it was good enough, and I'm gonna use the I have a black friend card, but I also have a black friend who really loves <laughs> Gintama, and he really <laughs> likes this episode. <laughs> he was immediately quoting me when I sent him the picture of <laughs> the black dude, he's like, ah, yes? <laughs> <laughs> of course. Him. Perfect. <laughs> let's t- Let's talk about it. So, I thought they did a a good job. Funny episode, I think it was probably the strongest of the four that we've seen. What do you feel, Zen? Uh, Definitely the best one of the four. I laughed out loud in this one for, like, multiple times. When when he's going through the memories of them, and uh, it's just all the stuff that's already happened, but with these characters replacing everyone except for him. (laughs) It's really funny. (laughs) Like, when they're they're doing the the beef bowl, like, hot pot thing. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. and they're like, it's the exact same thing, but they're all like sitting around it, like nervously about ready to try to get the meat out of it. 
And it's like the same detailed, like nervous image of Gintoki, but all the other it's just those <laughs> new characters. <sighs> it was really funny. It was really funny. It was really good. And again, like redoing the episode one bit, except for he's now speaking in English. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that was that's one of the funniest endings of an episode I've seen. Yeah, it was really good. It was really well done, <laughs> really funny. And man, yeah, well, this is a good one to end it off before we get into the bigger arc. So, like I said previously, thankfully, someone in the comments was able to tell us ahead of time that actually this episode ends with a trailer for the next big arc, which is something they tend to do whenever an arc is coming up. That is one that um is big in length and let me tell you boy this one is fucking massive so let's talk about what we're going to be doing next week because next week we are going to be talking about the yoshiwara in flames arc which is episode strap in for this one 139 140 141 142 143 144 145 and 146 holy shit big one big in this is a big one. This is going to be a... Uh, we talked about this beforehand. This is going to have to be a jumbo jumbo jump episode of uh, Shonen Archive. Mm-hmm. Uh, we will hold off on watching another series to go with it and just dedicate this completely to it because, god damn, that's a lot of episodes. I'm, to the point where I'm probably going to have to watch this the day before because I know based off of the way I watch episodes, I'll, I almost forgot today until I was like... Oh man, I made. I had so much time. Why did I prepare so much time? And then when I was watching a video in the middle of it, I was like, "Fuck! It's because I was supposed to <laughs> allow this time to watch an archive <laughs> <laughs> to watch the episodes." And I quickly went on there and I was able to do it. I was just only like twenty minutes late, but still, with this many episodes, I might have to see it beforehand and talk about it before, and we'll see. Man, I'm looking forward to it because it definitely looks like another big ass arc. Um, I've also seen a decent number of people going like, I can't wait <laughs> to, to hear you guys talk about this one. So some people are definitely been waiting for it. And that's always fun. And, uh, so if you're someone who's deep into Gintama and you want to watch these episodes real quick before we talk about them, now's your time. And now's your chance, I should say. So, woo, you looking forward to it, son? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping it's good. We've had a, I know we did the last few kind of in like a weird broken up bit because of this upcoming arc. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm hoping it lives up to the hype because a lot of these previous episodes have been kind of, you know? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So I'm, I'm hoping it lives up to well, the excitement. Wouldn't it be funny if we did all this backbreaking stuff just for this to turn out to be okay? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I think that's actually the, the best way for this to go. But, hey, I'm willing to try it out and see how it goes. So look forward to that next week. And then the two weeks from now, don't worry about it. We'll deal with this first, and then we'll talk about what comes after. Um, But, yeah, that's the end of Shonen Archive, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. As always, you can find Zen over on his channel. Uh, and <laughs> Zen, I was about to go go to type in ZenRetto.com and see what pops up. <laughs> But no, but go to the, click on the link or you can go to YouTube and type in his name and you will, chances are, either find his channel or the one nanogenics video where he has his <laughs> name. Actually, I wonder. Probably that, you know that video made it so that I couldn't get Zenrado on Discord when, uh. Really? Yeah, someone else took it. Okay, I want you to know that episode 110 of, uh, oh no, these are from the latest. Okay, no, it's mostly. I don't sh- have, uh. I don't have it on Instagram either. Someone used that too. Man, really? Nano shit. You should, you should get some, like, <laughs> some, you should get on, uh, ask Nano for a favor just because of how badly he's fucked over your name <laughs> and you're willing <laughs> know, to right? get it back. <laughs> have him appear for something and be like, all right, you know, you can make a quick special guest thing for me <laughs> and see it. I have found out what you find. So when you type in Zenrado, first thing that comes up is your channel, of course. Sad to see it's not my channel, but, you know, it, your, your name is technically on it, so it's going to show up. Shonen and Chill, of course, that's yours. And then we have the People Also Watched feature, which is the Monster Hunter movie Broke Me, which is by Oceanus. So, a lot of people made sure to watch that like right how, now. I like how as soon as he left Shonen and Chill, you've reverted to pronouncing his name wrong. No, no, if he wants his name to be bright, he can come back to the show and he can get his name correctly again. 
<laughs> it's not on purpose. It's, you know, for a fact, with my PyCon thing, it's not a disrespectful thing, just to make sure no one... <laughs> Zen knows at this point yeah, I can't he, I can't he pronounce econ it. to this day to talk about PyCon. Yeah, exactly. I just don't say Even the... though the characters it's a it's a TV show, so the characters say the name out loud. It's true, but you know But uh, you still say Pecon with your whole chest. I do, and I feel like enough I, I there are there there are tens of us. A dude from an official Dragon Ball thing came out and said Pecon. And I said, you know what? Everyone was making fun of him. I saw, you know, the Goresh did you, did you making the scenes? jokes. Yes, I saw everyone, all the big <laughs> Dokkan YouTubers making fun of him. And I wanted to give him a tweet and say, hey, you know what? I feel you, brother. <laughs> I'm there for you. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you on this. And then the other videos, of course, the Shonen and Chill special episode, the JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, the Stone Mask Saga. Uh, representation and sexualization in anime, the flash cut by someone and then Aaron beats up Armin and hurts Mikasa the German dub what is it <laughs> of course yeah all things that you can see if you type all, in all my favorite things yeah oh and then eventually we get the show archive episode one for, for Gintama oh see t- feel free to tell us what you see when you type in Zenrado's name into YouTube <laughs> tell us how your algorithm <laughs> looks like and yet, you can find Zen that way. And then if you want more videos featuring me, it's on this channel, man. Uh, I do stuff <laughs> other than Fago sometimes. <laughs> sometimes I don't, though, because I'm very tired from work, <laughs> and I have a lot, of that, a lot of responsibilities now. But I try and do some other stuff occasionally. And uh, yeah, and then we also occasionally stream on my channel um, when we have the time for it and our <laughs> schedules align perfectly. But yeah, that's it for Shonen Archive this week. Thank you very much for watching, as always. We appreciate it a whole bunch. We wouldn't be keep doing this if it wasn't for you guys. And if you want to show support, you can do that best by leaving a like and watching and uh, subscribing to me. But honestly, watching is good enough for us. <laughs> as long as there's people to talk about this with, we will continue doing it until the ends of time itself. And we fade away into pure darkness. We just fade into the ether. Oh, yeah, I can't wait for it, dude. One day, I'm just going to fade away. <laughs> it needs to be. Yeah, exactly. If I had a way to go out, I want to go out like Thanos. I just, <laughs> I just want, like, one day my time will be up and I'll go like, damn. And then I'll just fade into dust and hope that nobody's behind me when I fade away. <laughs> <laughs> That's all it's going to be. Damn. <laughs> it's just gone. Yeah. That's going to be my last words, damn, <laughs> and then I leave away. I think I've already said I've made plans to that well, the second I'm gone, someone else will just pick up the Woke Man. I'll be like a Dread Drive Pirate Roberts status, <laughs> but there will, there will always be a Wokey. I'll just pass on the channel to someone else and say, you're Wokey now. <laughs> you are Wokey now. <laughs> exactly. Continue the legacy, and we'll see how long we can keep this going, baby. But that's the end of the show. an archive in fucking 2110 <laughs> by the fourth iteration of Oh yeah, that'd be so. By the fourth, by like the the fourth generation Wokey and the fifth generation Zenrado, <laughs> talking about uh, the new the new season of Dragon Ball, how they're still waiting for it. Damn, it's crazy that they still haven't released Dragon Ball Super Two. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll finally be talking about Two Piece. Yeah, exactly. Two piece. The the one piece will have ended by then. <laughs> Hopefully. All right, that's it, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you guys next time. Say goodbye, Zen. Goodbye, everybody. And play sound music.